Today I want to go over my favorites for February. I feel like it's been a minute since I've done a favorites video, but honestly I have like no concept of time so who really knows. Um, I'll definitely link my last uh, favorites video somewhere up here for you guys so that you can check it out if you'd like. But yeah, I am really excited to show you guys which plants have just been really calling out to me and like really showing off for me lately. That's really what it is. They've just been like really showing off even though it's winter and you know, it's not, it's not great outside right now, although today is a pretty good day. But overall, it's been a really yucky winter. Um, but these plants that I have to show you today have all just been really not given a crap about the weather or anything like that, and I really appreciate it. So yeah, let's give these guys a little bit of a spotlight, shall we? Okay, the first one, <laughs> the first one that I wanna show you First off, caveat before I even get started, there's a lot of philodendron here today. I'm realizing I am surrounded by philodendron. So <laughs> if that's not your thing, I'm so sorry, but honestly, maybe we can make it your thing, okay? Because these are insane. So the first one that I wanna show you today is my philodendron SP Columbia. Ooh! Look at her. Okay, so let me kind of give you a little leaf tour, shall we? So we've got this guy here. Isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> and we've got this little baby right here, which is still like, honestly, like as big as my head, right? Pretty much, um, or my face or whatever. Um, and then we've got this little teeny baby here. This is the oldest leaf. I want to say the oldest leaf that it also came with, perhaps? I could be wrong, but I don't think this has actually dropped any leaves since importing it. I got this guy from Equigenera back in October, um, and it's been doing really, really well. Um, and so, okay, listen, let's see. Did I show you this leaf here? Ooh, so beautiful! And then we've got this guy here. So it just put out this leaf, so it is still unfurling, and it's kind of that, like, a little bit of a lighter color still. I did have this guy like up on my, like on top of my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. So as you can see, it's like a pretty tall plant and it was almost touching the grow light, but still showed like, I would say no signs of getting too much light, which is really crazy if you ask me, really impressive. Um, and then yeah, so it's pushing out this leaf here and I decided that with this new leaf to go ahead and pull it down from its spot and I think I'm gonna move it into my bedroom and see how she does in there. Honestly, I'm really nervous to move her in there though, but we will see. Um, I'm gonna try her in there and see how she likes it. Um, ideally, I would like to have it in my greenhouse behind me, just because I feel like she would love it in there, but there's no room in there right now for her. I need to do like a major overhaul of my grow time, which is gonna be time consuming. So <laughs> we'll see when we get to that. But yeah, the SP Columbia, even outside of the cabinet or outside of any sort of greenhouse or anything like that, it's been doing fantastic. Such an easy plant. Like, oh my God. And look at the size pot it's in. Like it's in a really small pot. It's actually ready for a repot here. I don't know if you can see, but there are some roots. I can feel them right here. There's some roots. Um, so yeah, he's ready for a repot. He does feel pretty compact in there as well. Like there, it feels like there's some good root action happening in there, which is fantastic. Not mad about it, that's for sure. I just think it is such a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. And with it being so easy to care for, like, what is there not to love? Let me show you the back of this new leaf too, because it has such like a beautiful sheen to it on the back of the leaf. Hopefully you can kind of tell there, but oh my gosh, it is just, oh, it's so pretty. So yeah, philodendron SP Columbia, easy, easy care plant. So easy. Like I literally just water it when it feels really dry. Like it's been very, very forgiving if I go a few extra days in between waterings and it's bone dry. It's so forgiving so far. I haven't had a single issue with it. Knock on wood, you know what I'm saying? But no issues so far. So you'll catch no complaints over here from me with this beautiful guy. I'm gonna get this next guy out of the way because he's very wonky right now. He's ready for a repot. He's also thirsty. <laughs> because he's ready for a repot. He's kind of always thirsty right now, but he's been so easy. He doesn't even like really care. So let me show you another philodendron because you know, <laughs> as promised, this is my plow manii. Okay, this is our newest leaf right here. Can we just, can we just stop for a second to appreciate the size 
the girth, if you will. She's so beautiful. She's so huge. I just like, I'm getting choked up. I'm sorry. I can't even believe the size. Like it did get a little bit ripped coming out as you can see right here. Who cares? I'm like, you know, who cares? A little imperfection on a leaf does not bother me in the slightest, honestly, especially if it's just like a little tiny thing like that. Um, so fine with me, but this plant has just been so easy. Let me get you kind of a close up here of her. How close are we? There we go. She is just incredible. Ugh, for real? Like, are you serious? Let me flip her around here so you can hopefully see the back of the leaf too. But look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Can you see those roughly petioles too? Oh my goodness. It's so pretty. <laughs> Now, I will say that my Plumanii, uh, my like specific specimen, does not have the most like silver um, kind of like splotching on it. It does have some kind of right here. There's some. There's a good little chunk right here. Um, where else? There's some on the other side as well, you know. But, you know, there's not a ton of splashing, but that just leaves more room in my collection for another Plamanii that is really splashy. So yeah, I am not mad about it at all. Let me kind of show you first off, this is, this is how we're looking. When I say it's a little wonky and wild right now, this is what I mean. We're a little wild and wonky, um, but yeah. Okay, let me give you another little leaf tour, shall we? So this is our oldest leaf. Again, I don't think, and I could be wrong, so don't quote me on this, but I don't believe that I've lost any leaves on this plant. Um, and I'm pretty confident in saying that because this is like, this last leaf here is like down to the very, very end of this like whole node situation. This is another crawling plant. I'm finding that I really love me a crawler right now, you guys. I didn't, I have never really had any before my uh, Gloriosa which honestly compared to all of my other uh, crawlers has been the slowest growing so far, but I think it's because it really needs a repot and it's like needed one for a while. So we'll get to that this week. But, um, but yeah, I love me a crawler. They're just so beautiful and easy, at least so far, so easy. Um, but yeah, okay, back to our leaf tour. I'm sorry, Tangent City here. Like, I mean, when is it not? Okay, so yeah, here's our oldest leaf right here. I feel like the lobies on this guy are really extra pronounced and I love it. Like, look at that, that is so cool. But you can see our like, you know, ruffly bit here is much shorter. The ruffles only last for about an inch, maybe two inches here. And then it gets that just like regular smooth petiole. And then I would say, yeah, the ruffly section gets longer and longer kind of on each leaf. So here's the next leaf here, the next oldest leaf. I don't know, how do you say that? And then our ruffles go a little bit longer. Hopefully you can see that. I really can't tell if you can, but hopefully you can. The ruffles go on for about like two and a half, three inches for this one perhaps. Um, so yeah, and then it just kind of gets longer and longer. This leaf is our next one. Oh, it's so beautiful. This guy is our next one. Absolutely stunning. I feel like this one had a good amount of silvery on it too. Am I wrong? Yeah, I'm kind of wrong. Um, and then, yeah, and then this guy here, our newest, biggest leaf with honestly the most kind of silveriness on it. So that's promising, hopefully. Hopefully we'll just get more and more, you know? Cause honestly looking at it now, there is quite a decent amount of that silveriness on there. It's so crazy. Like that's the, I have a pretty good size hand, you guys. And like, that is huge. Oh, it's so cool. Um, but yeah, philodendron plumanii, honestly, same care as any of my other philodendron, <laughs> nothing special whatsoever. I water it when the pot is dry. Um, which it's pretty darn dry right now. It feels very, very light, especially for all this plant going on. Um, oh, and I didn't even show you. We're working on a new leaf right here and it's got a flower, which is right here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I, oh, I'm just blocking it with this leaf. I don't know what to do with this flower. It hasn't opened up yet. So it's not like it's still, it's still cooking, you know? And then we're working on a new leaf right here. Look at that. It's so cool looking like right before it pops out. It's literally like about to pop out of there. 
Can you see that? Block my face if I can. But how do I block my face and show you at the same time? But okay, yeah, hopefully you can see there's like a seam right along here and it is about to pop through that. So that's super exciting. I definitely need to get this guy into a bigger pot. Like I said, that is a thing I will be doing this week. Ah, yeah, I've got a lot of repotting to do, you guys, but that's good. It's a good thing. That means things are growing. So, or they're not growing and I just need to like check their soil. But most of things, uh, most of the things that I need to repot are because um, they've grown. So that's fantastic, even through winter time. You know what I mean? I'm definitely not shy about repotting plants in winter, about doing really anything to my plants in winter. I personally am not too worried about it. Um, I've never had any crazy adverse effects from doing that. So I just do it. Um, but yeah, beautiful philodendron plowmanii. I could talk about this plant forever because it's just so cool. It crawls, it's got silveriness. It's got ruffly petioles, what? So the next plant that I have to show you, ooh, oh goodness gracious, she's so cool. But I can, another like weird one to kind of show off here. This is my um, Anthurium, oh, I completely just blanked on the name of this. So I'm gonna put the name on the screen for you, but it's an Anthurium, pen, pen it's a pendant anthurium. Oh my God. I don't know how I just forgot that, but I'm just going to give you kind of a slow go down the leaf here. Look at how beautiful. So it came to me with like four leaves. I want to say I got this guy also from Equigenera in October, I believe. Um, it came to me with this leaf here, this super, super long leaf here, like, whoa, that sucker's long. I don't think I've ever measured it, or if I did, I don't remember, but I'll put the measurement here so that you can uh, see, get kind of a real feel for just how large this leaf is. It's so cool. And the like, I don't know if I'll be able to really capture the beautiful, like kind of light patterning on it, but it's just gorgeous. I feel like you can kind of see it more on the back of the leaf. So let me flip this turkey around here. There's the back of the leaf here. Oh, there she is. Oh, it's so cool. I don't know what you can see. Hopefully you can kind of get a feel for it here, but it's just, it's so beautiful. So yeah, it came to me with four leaves. These were two of them. Um, it did kill off two other of the smaller leaves that it came with, which no big deal. That's all with acclimation. You know what I mean? Um, totally to be expected, honestly. So not a big deal whatsoever. I'm just like so glad that we got to hang on to this giant leaf. Like what? That's so crazy. Um, so yeah. Is it the Vitara folium? No, I don't have that one. I was looking that one up. That one's on my wish list, I think. I can't believe I can't remember what this name is. Politiflorum, you guys. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It will have already been on the screen for you because I will have figured it out. Obviously, already I did figure it out, but it's the Politiflorum. This is what she is. So yeah, um, like I said, it killed off those two oldest leaves. No big deal whatsoever. And then it put off this leaf for me. I didn't realize, I just realized actually, that it's got like this little split in the leaf right here, which is fine. No, no worries. But yeah, this leaf is gorgeous. It's a little bit shorter. It is longer than like this leaf that it also came with, but it isn't longer than like the longest leaf, if you know what I'm saying. And then this is the newest leaf right here. Look at how beautiful. Such a cool plant, you guys. Oh my goodness. I can't get over it. I love how like chunky mine gets throughout the center. Um, there are, I believe, I'm, I'm pretty sure at least, there are like different forms of this plant. Like there's like the super narrow and narrow and maybe the wide, I don't know. Um, as far as I know, this is just a regular politiflorum. Look at me now. Now I just like know the name of it. But, um, but yeah, I love how wide it gets right here. And then it kind of like thins back down to the point at the bottom. It's so beautiful. It's such a unique plant. I I want all the strappy anthurium now, which I feel like there aren't too terribly many, at least not yet. Um, but I know that there are always hybrids being made and 
you know I love me a hybrid. So yeah, um, I'll definitely be keeping my eyes peeled for reasonably priced little ones. Honestly, not anytime in like the near future because I really need to cool it. Just with money in general, we just need to, we need to simmer down a little bit and like really boost our savings up a little bit more. We wanna buy a house somewhere eventually. So yeah, we need to, we need to save up a little bit. So don't be expecting too many new plants from me uh, in the near future unless I get crazy lucky with something, but there are gonna be lots of baby plants in the new future though, so stay tuned for that. Um, anyway, I'm like on such a tangent today, you guys, like left and right, I'm so sorry. But yeah, so this plant, even though it is still uh, working on this leaf here, it's I don't think it's quite done growing yet because the color is a little bit light still. And well, actually no, it feels pretty solid. I was gonna say it feels kind of floppy, but it does feel pretty solid, so it might be done growing here, which is absolutely fine. It's gorgeous how it is. And there's a little growth point right here, which is awesome. This plant did also put out a little um, inflorescence that has since died off. I got too scared to try and do anything with it. I haven't had luck collecting any pollen from any anthurium. I've only had luck just rubbing one flower onto the next, if, you know, when they're like at the same time, which literally has just happened the one time that it lucked out and it, it worked, which is incredible. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, dog's barking once again. Um, chill, dude. <laughs> but yeah, um, I didn't know what to do with it. I got too scared. Um, so yeah, that inflorescence just kind of like came and went, which is unfortunate, but there will be more in the future. Um, I just don't even know if it's possible to, I mean, I know I could always like collect the pollen from this and save it and then cross it with itself, but is it possible to cross a pendant anthurium with a non-pendant anthurium? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, is it possible to cross, uh, you know, this, a politiflorum with a crystallinum? Is that possible? I don't think I've ever seen that. Like, what would that even look like? It'd probably look really cool, honestly, if it was like this, but like maybe chubbier and like super veiny. Oh, that would be freaking cool. Um, but I just, I don't think I've ever even seen that. So I don't know if it's possible. Um, let me know if you guys know down in the comments below if that's like a thing that I could do. I mean, it never hurts to try, I guess, if I ever have, um, you know, inflorescence that are at the right time for both this plant and like a crystallinum or something like that, a different kind of non-pendant anthurium. I'll definitely give it a try one day just cause, why the heck not? But, um, but yeah. I will quit yabbing, yabbering on, yabbering on, jabber, jib, jibber jabbering on. I'll quit talking about this plant and move on to the next, but yeah, beautiful anthurium politiflorum. Woo, hard to show ya all at once. All right, you guys, my next favorite for February is not a single plant, no, 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 but this behind me, my grow tent, my greenhouse, whatever you want to call it. I feel like grow tent is more accurate, but I always will switch them up. This grow tent, you guys, this thing is amazing. It's been such a game changer. I feel like I say so many things are game changers. Who doesn't? But it really is like, oh my God, if I have a plant that's just like struggling to grow, not necessarily with pests because I don't just want to put a crazy pest ridden plant in my grow tent amongst all of my other beautiful thriving plants. But if I have a plant that's just like really having a hard time growing in general, I'm gonna stick it in here and it's probably gonna be absolutely fine and like really start growing for me. That's kind of how it's been with putting plants in here. I just, I love it so much. Okay, I'm gonna get behind the camera really quick. I'm gonna get here and I'm gonna get you scooted in here so you can really see kind of what I have going on. This plant we're gonna kind of ignore. I'm working on him. Oh, focus, there we go. This is the Hoya that I brought back with me from Washington State when I went to visit my family recently. Um, but yeah, let me kind of scooch him out of the way here so you can really see. But look at this, oh my gosh. This is like my happy zone, you guys. It's so gorgeous. Okay, look at that. Do you see that giant pasta leaf? Are you kidding me, you guys? Ignore how dirty and gross the bottom of the tent looks. That will get cleaned up sometime this week when I redo this whole tent. But, oh my gosh, I am just obsessed. <laughs> this uh, 
Paris Soverde here is clearly like way outgrown sitting on the shelf that he's on here. He's ready to be like resituated. Um, that's really one of like the main reasons that I'm going to finally like nut up or shut up and go ahead and like redo this whole situation so that he can have like a space on the ground because as is, we pan you down, the ground is really, really filled up with stuff. So <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to do something about that. But everything in here is so happy. Like, look at this Hoya. Look at all that. It's so pretty. Look at this. This is a Hoya pubic calyx. Dude, it starts way down here. Like, are you kidding? He's just like twirled his way, vined his way up the um, cord for my spider farmer light here. This is the spider farmer SF600, by the way. Fan freaking tastic light. Oh my God, you guys, I will link this down below for you as well. This obviously is part of the February favorites because it is in the tent. This is a um, Vivo Sun grow tent. Um, my boyfriend scored this tent for free from one of his coworkers. Um, it's the same, I feel like, as any other grow tent. Like my boyfriend has, um, I believe they're Zazzy, oops, sorry, I'm not going to get around, Zazzy brand uh, grow tents in the basement. And um, they look almost exactly the same as this. And they work just the same. They keep everything in. They are waterproof. They've got like a little, um, show you down here. This is so gross. I'm sorry. It's embarrassing, but they've got like a little liner so that everything sits inside this. And then, you know, it's all waterproof. And then even if stuff does get down here, this is still all waterproof. You just have like an extra layer to make it really, really easy to clean out. So, it's just fantastic. I mean, if you can fit a grow tent like this somewhere in your house, I obviously like, I personally wouldn't have this just in like my living room. But yeah, I like wouldn't necessarily personally put something like this like in my living room um, just because it is, you know, it's beautiful when it's open and you can see all of it, but then you're kind of defeating the purpose of it doing its job of like keeping all of the humidity and the light in there. So I do definitely only like try to keep this guy really open and unzipped if I am filming and I want to have a pretty nicely lit planty background, which I love to have. If, let me know what you guys think of it, by the way. Is it too busy? I don't know. I feel like it can never be too busy if it's plants. But, um, but yeah, other than that, I do try to keep this sucker zipped up at all times and just like open it and peek at it to just see how she's doing throughout the day and stuff like that. I'll usually like peek in there once a day, maybe once every other day if I'm like getting really crazy with work, but I just love going in here and opening this like first thing in the morning before I leave for work, even on like my super, super early day when I have to be there at like four o'clock in the morning, I'll still wake up and like come and peek on the ladies in here and see how we're all doing, see how we're growing, make sure no one's like, extremely thirsty or anything like that. But yeah, I just, I love it so much. So yeah, if you have space or something like this anywhere in your house, if you have a spare bedroom like I do or a basement or something like that where you can get something like this set up, do it, you guys. It's so, so fun. And you never know, maybe you'll end up using an area in your house that always was going unused because you had no reason to go in there and then bam, now you have a reason and an excuse to go in there like all the time. And an excuse to get more plants, right? Like maybe some pickier plants because you have a nice space to keep them in. Oh my gosh, I just love it. So yeah, that is why this has been on my February favorites list because it's my happy place. It feels so good to just open it up and stick my face in there and just be like, oh, hello. You're all looking so good. I love just seeing all of the root growth Aerial roots grow like mad in here, you guys. It's so, so cool. So yeah, definitely uh, check out a grow tent if you're interested in something like that. It's so cool. So, so cool. And they make clear ones too. They make all different kinds of beautiful grow tents, but I would just make sure it is something that can like really be waterproof, easy to spray in. That's the other thing too. I can spray in here and super easy. There's nothing that's gonna like, um, what's the word I'm looking for, gets rusty or anything like that. It's not gonna happen in here. So it's just really, really easy and like kind of carefree, really. So yeah, definitely keep your eyes peeled for something like that at like a good price, cheap to free. We love that, right? Because it's just worth it. It's so fun. Okay, I'm gonna stop gabbing because I just love it. I just love it. Okay. Did I even show you the Hoya flowers though? Oh, hold on. Okay, one more time, you guys. I'm so sorry. Hold on. And like this freaking uh, 
what are you called? It's on the tip of my tongue. <gasps> Friedek, the Friedek. Oh, are you thirsty? You're just looking a little sad. I think these are just the oldest leaves. Okay, what I want to show you though, I'm getting so distracted by my own plants, you guys, Jeez Louise, are these Hoya flowers. Look at those. Let's see if I can reach back in here and move them a little bit. Look at that. Aren't those gorgeous, you guys? <gasps> they stink. Can't lie, they definitely stink. <laughs> they stink up this whole tent. And since I've had the tent like unzipped to film this video, if I like walk out and come back in, the whole room kind of stinks, but that's okay. Cause it's just toy flowers. <laughs> All right, my next plant that is on, oop, I don't drop it. <laughs> that's on my February favorites list is another philodendron. Like I said, they've just been getting me lately. They've just been showing off like crazy. They don't care that it's winter. They simply don't care. And I have just been absolutely loving this plant lately. So I had to share it with you. This is my philodendron summer glory. This is a cross between <laughs> something. It's a cross between a gloriosum and something else. I want to say like Macaulay's finale. I don't remember. I'll put it on the screen for you, but look at how gorgeous she is. Oh my goodness. I just can't get over that like satin sheen on the leaves. Do you see that? Isn't that so pretty? And then this guy, I just watered, but he still looks a little bit thirsty and curled in, but this is the, I'm making a freaking mess with water too. This is the newest leaf here. It's already started to kind of change color, but if I flip it around, you might be able to see on the back of the leaf that gorgeous, gorgeous coloring. I don't even know what color that is, but it's gorgeous. It's almost like a bronzy kind of color. And then if I get you in here, you can kind of see what color that new leaf is gonna be. And the back of the leaf is so beautiful. Do you see that color? Let's see if I can poke through the leaves here. It's so pretty. This guy has just never stopped growing since I purchased him. I'm gonna get the saucer here. We're making such a mess, but it's kind of a little late for that. But yeah, this guy has not stopped growing since I brought it home from the nursery. Um, probably two months ago or something like that, it's popped out so many leaves. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I feel like hybrid anything, but specifically hybrid philodendron grow so, so well. Like, especially if they're like two kind of trickier plants, which Gloriosum, in my opinion, is not terribly tricky. And like I said, I'm gonna have to see what the um, cross is because I really don't remember. Um, but either way, it's got one pretty easy parent, but even if both parent plants are pretty tricky plants to deal with, if it's a hybrid of the two tricky plants, it's probably gonna be pretty easy because it seems like the babies of the hybrids, at least the ones that like are really getting out to the public, are ones that kind of take like all of the best properties from those parent plants and kind of like leave behind the picky ones. You know what I mean? Like those picky properties. So yeah, this guy has just been so easy. Look at that leaf, you guys. What the heck? Like it looks like a fake plant. That is so cool. Oh my gosh. This leaf feels a little bit mad at me because he just needs a repot so bad, I think, but it's so cool. And I believe there are how can I show you this? It looks like there are some pups down at the base of the plant too, which is so cool. So, so cool. That does lead me to believe that this is a cross between Gloriosum and the Macaulay's Finale because the Macaulay's Finale is a plant that will also pup. At least I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong on that too because I don't think mine's actually pupped before, but I just feel like it could. I could totally be wrong. I'm going to Google that. And I'll put on there if Macaulay's Finale can pup. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there because my tummy calls for it. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed seeing my February favorites this month. And I'm gonna try and make this a little bit more regular. The months go by so fast, you guys. Let me know if you guys enjoy these videos. I personally love watching other people's favorites videos. So that's why I kind of like wanna make sure, oh, guys, stop. That's why I want to make sure that I'm like doing more myself. But yeah, my dogs are barking, so it's time to go. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.